What is up, New Beginning Church? Happy Tuesday morning to you. Let's do this. Let's dive into those red letter words. Matthew chapter 24. It says this in verse number 12. Um, it says, because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. Another translation says, he that endures to the end shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. So a couple observations in these two scriptures. Number one, this is something that some uh, uh, some people point to and say that one of the signs that Jesus can return is that the whole world has heard the gospel preached. And again, gospel means good news. The good news that Jesus came, that he died, that he rose again, that God has done for you what you could not do for yourself, um, that's good news, that Jesus has conquered and won. And so anyway, um, but the verse before that, though, it says that he that endures to the end shall be saved. Um, again, it, it points to this idea that one of the things you want to develop in life is your perseverance, your endurance, your grit. We talked about that just a couple days ago on Sunday, that that people who live a uh, or leave a legacy are people who just they are willing to face the fact that life will be difficult and challenging at times, and they're going to keep pressing forward regardless. Um, as a matter of fact, we read a scripture from the book of James that talked about how like you can reach a point potentially where you count it all joy when you face various types of trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces that kind of endurance and perseverance. And that thing is actually the thing that perfects your faith. That's James chapter 1, the first few verses. Go read that. Um, it says that they know people who who change the way that they look at trials and temptations and persecution, they know, they know that, that perseverance is going to do a work in them. Here's what I think they know. I'm going to give you a few things to think about uh, today. Number one is, is, is that people who are really mature in they, their faith, they know this, that trials are temporary. They are not final. Um, have you ever noticed that when you're in the midst of a trial, it feels like there is no light at the end of the tunnel. You're never going to get out of this. It's always going to be this way. Uh, really mature people, when they get into a trial, one of the things they can tell themselves is like, hey, this is not going to last forever. This is temporary. We will get through this. You know, this is not, you know, whatever. Here, here's the second thing that they tell themselves, though, is this, is, hey, even in death, Death does not get the final say. We've talked about that before. Like the really mature people change the way they look at death, that death is not the finale. Death is the transition. And Jesus conquered death through the resurrection. So like if the worst that the enemy can throw at me is death and Jesus defeated death, I'm going to be okay. Um, here's another one that God is still in control, regardless of the fact that whether I'm in control or not, uh, that's irrelevant. God is still in control. Here's another huge comforting one for me. I'm not alone in this trial. Um, I see this in a couple ways. Number one, I'm not alone in the sense that I'm the only person who's ever gone through this. Um, you know, I talked to a woman just a couple days ago and, and she was talking about the loss of her son and she was talking about how difficult that had been. And, and, and it's not right. It's not natural for you uh, to have your children die before you and then the pain that that caused. And, you know, the reality is, is that she is not the only one to have ever lost a child. It is unbearable, I assume. I, I can't even imagine, don't even want to try to. There's no way I can fully empathize with that, but there are some who can. You are not alone in the sense that you're the only person who have ever gone through this. The second way that you're not alone is this, is even if I've never experienced what you've experienced, I can hold your hand. I can pray for you. I can give you a hug. I can sit and listen. Um, I'm still your brother in Christ and, and I'm here for you in any way possible. And so you are not alone. And then lastly, I'll give you this one. You will be stronger on the other side of this. Uh, that's what really mature people know. They, they know this. Hey, that, that thing that I'm going through, it's going to perfect my faith. I don't know how, but one day I'm going to get over this. Through Christ Jesus, I'm going to get over this. I'm going to overcome this thing. And then you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to help somebody overcome their trial as well. And when you know that, then, then in the face of your most difficult trial, you can endure to the end. Can I get an amen to that? Let me pray for you today. Lord, I lift up my brothers and sisters. God, if there are any of them today within the sound of my voice who are underneath the weight and the pressure of pain or suffering or trial or persecution even, God, I pray that you would be their comforter, um, that God, you would be with them, that you would be their grace and strength. And Lord God, I pray for people to come around them and support them and pray for them, Lord God. And so I just pray your peace over their life in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody say amen. Church, I love you. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.